Hi. In this video, we're going to demonstrate switching between scenes or zones using the staging mechanism of Godot XR Tools. So let's create a uh, staging demo uh, project in the temp folder. It'll be a compatibility uh, a renderer. So this is going to use a pre-release version of Godot XR Tools with a few minor bug fixes. So we'll just uh, bring up the import and uh, Pick it, I've already downloaded it into the temp folder. Did you ignore the asset root so the add on goes to the right location? This uh, is just a few minor bug fixes and should be available uh, in the next few days. So we get a few issues because the plugin hasn't been enabled yet. So go to the project settings, enable the plugin. And while we're in here, we'll uh, enable OpenXR and the XR shaders. So once this reloads, we'll uh, set up the physics layers using the uh, Wicked OXR Tools plugin script. Now we need a, uh, a, a scene, you know, an image for staging. So uh, let's uh, create a new folder uh, containing the, uh, the assets. I have an image in my temp folder, so let's go and copy. It's actually just the Godot logo. So let's uh, copy that, paste it into the assets. So as you can see, it's turned up here. All right. So the first thing we need to do is create a, a staging scene, the main staging scene. So in Godot XR Tools, there's a staging folder with staging uh, scene to start with. So inherit from that, you know, let's rename this to main and uh, save this as our own customized main staging at the top. Uh, now it's got a loading. Uh, uh, screen which we can drag our, uh, our Godot logo onto. So this will be shown when we are initially loading the game and when we are uh, switching between scenes. So save this and we'll create a new scene inheriting from the scene base. Uh, so this will be used as foundation for all of the zones. So we'll just call this zone base. Oh, and let's change the, uh, the title up there. So every zone we create is going to inherit from this. So let's configure the uh, XR rig in here to have movement. So all scenes will have that. So we'll first actually drag in the left and right hand. That's the left. Got that from the wrong location. Let's pop it under the right hand node. There we go. So bring in our movement functions. So under the left hand, movement with uh, uh, strafing. Right's going to have movement. Um, we'll also have right have turn. And let's have uh, jump and uh, crouch. So bring a jump in and let's hook that up to the uh, AX button. And let's hook up crouch to the BY. That, I think, gives us a, uh, a complete movement rig. I'll close that down. So now let's actually create our zone one. So we'll start by inheriting from the zone base. Rename it to uh, zone one and save uh, this file as uh, zone one. So Add a sun and an environment node, and let's add a ground node. So 
at a static body 3D and rename it ground. Let's uh, add a mesh instance. Make it a quad mesh, 20 by 20 meters, and rotate it so it's flat with the ground. And let's make it uh, green. So give it a material, change the albedo. The, there you go, that looks about right. And let's give it a collision shape. It should be a box. 20 by 1 by 20, and we'll have to drop it down half a meter so it's flush with the ground. All right, so I'm going to save this, and let's go back to the main scene. And that node, you know, the main node, we have to set what scene we're going to load on entry. So save that and set this as the, uh, the main scene Godot runs at startup, and let's give it a shot. All right, so there's a little splash screen. Hold the trigger, and it loads zone one for us. So you can see we can turn, move around, jump. Let me get a little closer so I can see. No, yeah, there's crouching and jumping. All right, so that's looking good. So, but we're supposed to show switching between zones, so let's create a second zone. So again, we'll inherit from the zone base, and this time we'll call it zone two. Save this guy. Zone two.tscm. It's actually, yeah, let, let's add the, uh, the sun and uh, we'll add the ground now. We're gonna add a, an environment a little bit, but uh, create the ground. Give it a, another 20 by 20 uh, quad mesh. Again, rotated flat. Let's make this gray. We'll make this a foggy scene to demonstrate a uh, different environment. Okay. Let's actually add the uh, the collision, otherwise we'll fall straight through it. So another 20 by 1 by 20 uh, collision shape and move it down flush with the ground. All right. And let's add a world environment. Create a new environment resource. And enable fog. Set the density to uh, 0.4. We'll copy the uh, the fog color, and we'll use that as the uh, the background color. There we go. So one foggy zone. Save that, and there we go. So we're going to try toggling between these two zones. But to do that, we're going to need a teleporter. So create a new scene uh, inheriting from an area 3D. So let's add a mesh for the so we can see the teleport area. We we'll use a cylinder, uh, set its height to three meters, and make it flush with the ground. And let's make it transparent. So give it a material. Uh, turn transparency to alpha. Make it unshaded, so it's not affected by shadows or anything. And let's make it blue. And oh, let's actually give it a bit of alpha, so that we can see through it. There we go. All right. We just need to make a collision shape. This again will be a uh, cylinder three meters tall and flush with the ground. Right. So you have to add a script to this. Actually, first let's rename this to, uh, to teleport area. Now uh, save this. 
and then attach a script. So we're going to need an export, which is the name. Actually, yeah. So export uh, export. This is a file. Uh, so the editor will help us out here picking files. So every type of scene, and we'll call it target scene, and it's a string. So I'll show you what this looks like uh, in a minute. So. In the ready function, we're going to uh, take the body entered event and connect it to an on body entered function that we'll write in a minute. So, clear that out and on body entered. So, if we take a look at the uh, the node, oh, we click on it. We see on body entered uh, gives us a body of type node three D. So. Body node 3D, that's our function signature. We're not going to return anything. And I don't think we're actually going to use the body. So we'll just put a leading underscore to indicate uh, unused. So we've got to find our scene base. So that's going to be of type tool scene. So this teleport is going to be inside uh, a parent scene, which is a, a staging scene. So We'll find any ancestor uh, of type uh, scene base. So uh, find the uh, oh, let's get the name right. So find the exotool scene base this node is a child of. So if we can't find one, then obviously we can't do any teleporting. So I guess we'd better also uh, check that someone's actually set a target scene. So if the target scene is null or uh, well, it's the empty string, then we can't teleport. Actually, let's do that. Uh, we'll comment it up, but let's do that first. No point in finding the the scene base if we're not going to use it. So, and then if we've got a scene base and we've got a target scene, then we'll just call uh, the load scene function. Start the uh, the loading effort, which will uh, fade out the current scene, switch to the new one, and then unfade. So there we go, and we've got target scene, and that's a file picker. So oh yeah, we got to set the collision layer. So set the collision layer so uh, the player body, when it collides with this area, will trigger the uh, the scene loading. All right. So we'll put one of these in zone one. And target scene, we're going to do the file picker to pick zone two. And zone two, we'll uh, again put one right in front of the player. It's a little, a little too foggy, I think, there, but we'll give it a shot. And this one will teleport us back to zone one. All right, let's see how this works. All right, let's wander into the, yeah. I think I might have messed up the, uh... oh yeah, I think, I... Yeah, yeah, it shouldn't have been the layer, it should have been the mask. The mask is what thing is sensitive to. So yeah, this should really care, uh, we'll leave it on both just in case, but it should care uh, what collides with it. So let's give this a shot. Oh, there we go. And now we're in. Yeah, that is a little too foggy. We'll fix that next. All right. Now we're back to uh, zone one. All right. So let's turn off the prompting. That you know we don't want to keep on having that uh, prompt in front of us, and let's. Fix the fog density. Let's go to 0.1. There we go. That looks maybe a little, maybe a little better for us. All right. There we go. And back. Okay. Well, I think that'll do it for today.
Thank you.